uh, for multifocus imaging and light shield microscopy. Uh, but today, I think he's going to focus his talk about this uh, snapshot uh, polarimetrics uh, and the phase quantitative. So I would like to thank you, Ariel, to uh, join us and giving this talk. And uh, I pass the word for it to you. Okay. Thanks, Lionel. Uh, are you hearing me okay over okay. there? I am looking at your presentation, yes. Yes, it's okay. Well, thanks, Lionel, for the invitation. Maybe this is the least connected with everything you might have seen before during this workshop, but it's why I'm a physicist, as, as Lionel said, and my background is in another things a, a bit different from microscopy, but our interest in microscopy is somehow motivated by that previous work. So I'm going to show you part of our previous work such just to well, okay for you to see what we what we are working on and how we are moving from that things to what is connected to microscopy in particular to parametric microscopy and phase recovery and phase quantification that's what I'm going to talk to you today this is part of our work that is obviously not connected to the micro scale, but to a macro scale or a middle scale where we are able to take different points of view of a certain scene, either by a stereo camera, either by some integral imaging approach. We can synthesize those images, refocus, and so we can work with um, trying to uh, get rid of occlusions that might be useful also in the biological domain. And what we have learned there is that we might have some different information that has some kind of redundancy that might be useful working on the micro scale. So besides this, that is very nice at least for me, we tried some uh, image processing at real time using optical methods. In this case, that was part of the motivation that has to do with what I'm going to show you later. That is the use of uh, some kind of a lens led array or a group of lenses in which we have a different point spread function for each one related to, in this case, is something that has nothing to do with microscopy, in, at least for at uh, the best of my knowledge, that is the generalized half transform that is meant to find a certain shape out of a binary scene. In this case, we are working with something that has, for example, certain numbers of circles that you can see in this image, and we want to find every circle at every for every uh, scale. And to do so, we have some array of lenses that have a different shape or a different size of a circle behind them. That's a pupil mask. And we say, okay, we can achieve a, what we call a full invariant detection. And we say, okay, we can do this at real time. Why don't we try something different with some physical property or different from geometry and try to apply that on a different scale? And we say, we say okay, polarization is nice. Let's try with polarized light. As you may know, there are different mechanisms in nature to produce polarized light. First of all, when we talk about polarized light, we are usually talking about linearly polarized light, but the general state is uh, of elliptically polarized light and in particular circularly polarized light. We know that one of the most common mechanisms is absorption. We have a non-polarized source that pass through some Polaroid. And at the end of this process, we have our light with the electric field that is oscillating in a certain direction. That is polarized light. Our vectorial field has a particular direction of vibration. And besides absorption, we know that we can obtain polarization by reflection. You have seen recently one of those mechanisms in, in action, the reflection of light in the case of turf uh, microscopy. And we can also have a polarization by scattering. At the mix of both, we have this 
a nice phenomena that is called the Brewster dark patch. Besides that, that is nice to see, we know that polarized light can reveal to us some properties of the materials. In this case, it's a plastic, and we know that plastic, or under some circumstances, is birefringent, and we can observe this uh, material under cross polarizers. We can have both uh, some of these things that we can uh, observe under transmission, and we know that if the, polar the polaroids or the polarizing plates are cross, uh, there will be a really a small amount of light passing through them. But in the case of these materials, the stress when it was made is somehow codified in this pattern that we can observe under polarized light. Okay, besides these uh, man-made materials, we know that we can reveal some properties of other materials under polarized light. And these materials can also be biological materials. We have tissues and we can observe, for example, in this uh, nice uh, picture that what we can't uh, see under a uh, bright field or uh, common microscopy, transmission microscopy, is revealed under some parameters related to the polarization introduced by the material. Besides that, if we are talking about diagnosis by polarized light, we know that cancer cells have different properties, mechanical properties that are revealed by polarized light. Among those uh, properties or the quantities that we need to measure are two important things. One is called the degree of uh, linear polarization and the angle of polarization. As we told uh, before, we know that the general state of uh, polarized light might be elliptical, but a naturally occurring phenomena always, or most of the times, introduce some kind of linear polarization onto a non-polarized source. So we are mostly interested in that and it's quite easy to measure. How can we obtain this degree of linear polarization and angle of polarization? Well, uh, this, is, this is what is uh, called a Stoke polarimetry, and is one of the different forms that you can find in the literature. The most uh, appropriate for this context is in this regard. We need to obtain at least three parameters that are called S0, S1, and S2 that are related to four measurements that we can perform with uh, our system, our optical system, with one polarization, one polarized um, plaque in front uh, at what we call zero degree, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 135 degrees. By doing so, we can obtain different uh, images and we can obtain these parameters that we can in turn uh, give us some information about how uh, light is being modified by the material is going through. The first approach to obtain Stoke parameters, we are missing one here that is S3 that is related to the degree of circular polarization, but we are going to not to talk about that and probably not introduce it in the first approximation. The first form of, of the, how can we work with this polarized light is that we can use the usual or traditional approach that is using our setup and rotate our analyzer according to the different degrees that we need to obtain the stoke parameters. Another form that is commercially available is to have what is called a um, array of polarizers in front of each of our pixels of our camera. This is done at electronic level and we also have some kind of lens in front of each of our pixels in a micro lens array that allows us to gather a polarized light and analyze it through this uh, system. Both of these have certain advantages and certain disadvantages. This is always obviously pretty easy. This is commercially available, but we need to interpolate the information between pixels. And in the first case, we are suffering from a motion blur in our images. Another way that it might be much cheaper and somehow 
easy to apply at least at the lab level is to use what I'm going to talk to you about in this uh, new kind of or new development where we can put behind our objective in our microscope or polarization microscope a lens led array with different polarization mask behind that. This is the work of uh, Juan Chaguno who is currently pursuing a degree, a master degree in engineer in electrical engineering, uh, working in our lab and co-advised by Federico Lecumberri and me. Our work here is to obtain in a single shot, and this is the our motivation, because we want to obtain all the parameters at once and at least try to apply our method to something that is moving. And we are, for doing so, we need to uh, perform some, uh, sorry, some uh, real time processing. So we can obtain in a single shot in the chip or in the sensor of our camera, the different images that are going to give rise to the stoke parameters. So as we are putting a different polarization mask behind our, each of our lenslets, we have what we uh, can see here there is the image with a zero degree in the polarizer, 45 and so. And we need to put these images in a common geometry that is what is called in image process in a registration process and then perform these simple calculations. The registration process is somehow the, maybe the bottleneck or the most delicate process that we need to do so. And we need to find what is called also the common area. We need to uh, put all this information together, have the greatest field of view possible, and operate. And what we obtain here is an image that corresponds to the previous ones, but only taking into account the common area where we can operate. We are using an Olympus uh, 10 times magnification objective, and our lens, lens light array is uh, with a focal distance of 42 millimeters. So in whole, we have an effective magnification that is reduced from the original magnification of our objective, but we can operate at real time. So somehow we are sacrificing uh, some lateral resolution of our system for real time. This is uh, deeply rooted in the physics of our system because our the amount of information is somehow fixed. So we are not using the whole chip, the whole sensor, but we're using some parts. And what we're going to gain is real-time operation capability. This is one of the, our uh, ongoing results. There are no cells here. Sadly, we are just at our first step, but it's somehow nice to see how it's, it's going. Uh, this scale is not uh, perfectly correct, but what we can observe is that at a typical angle of uh, our analyzer, we have all the regions uh, through which the light is passing have a degree of polarization that's more or less uniform. That is okay because our, uh, we are trying to uh, see what happens with polarized light passing through something that it cannot introduce any change over it and the angle of polarization is somehow uniform. And besides that, and that's the most interesting uh, result that can I show you today, we can operate at real time. This is the case of a video. I hope you can see it well, where we are moving along as the frames are, are passing, we are moving the uh, analyzer or the polarizer in front of our system. And what you can observe there is that the degree of linear polarization is not modified. That is okay. So we are operating fine because the linear, uh, our linearly polarized light is not being modified. Other, you know, on the other hand, if we take a look at what happens to the angle of polarization, we can see that it's moving as time passes over our video. So that's okay. And it seems that we can operate uh, fine using our microscope. 
as you have seen, uh, this is not very suitable for uh, working with leaf material. So we might have some uh, modification, for example, to change the orientation to a regular microscope. But for the time being, I'm quite happy with the results. Besides polarization, we are also interested in obtaining phase information. What you can see here uh, on the right of your screen is a, a fish carocyte moving. I thank uh, Dr. Miguel Rosena for his video. And what you can observe there, and that's how we connect with the beginning of our presentation, is that we are performing a real-time optical operation because what we are uh, getting here is a uh, phase contrast. Phase contrast imaging is a well, great example of uh, optical operating over an image. But what we are getting here is just a visualization. What if we are interested in having some information about the amount of phase retardation that our specimen is introducing? So we are moving there to phase quantitative recovery or quantitative phase recovery. As you can see here, you know that phase information is encoded somehow in the focus. An in-focus image or a perfect image is not capable of giving us uh, any useful information about phase. Uh, on the other hand, if we defocus our system before, uh, below or above the focus position, we have some information. One way to obtain a phase quantitative besides the uh, common interferometric approaches is to use what is called the transfer of intensity. We are physicists, so we prefer to say irradiance, but it's known in the literature as intensity equation that relates the change in the transversal direction of our phase function with the variation of intensity in direction. Yes? So what we can uh, have here, uh, we need to obtain some variation of our intensity. So this is obtained by uh, different uh, focus positions of our system. This is a traditional uh, approach, for example, where we have on focus, under focus, and over focus. And you can see that phase information along with amplitude information are mixed. But transport of intensity equation allows us to work with both and recover both. So it's a complementary method to what you can obtain, for example, with fluorescence. And by a simple modification of our previous setup, we can develop a real-time processing or real-time uh, acquisition of differently focused images. How we can do this? Because, for example, by introducing a plate that moves our focus, yes, and have different uh, focus positions according to the different uh, thickness of the plates that we can put behind each of our lenses. Yes, this has been introduced with certain success in the context, for example, of AR um, devices where you need to move the focus. So it's feasible that we can introduce the modification of our uh, over our previous setup and somehow by operating wisely over this uh, derivative and using four images to uh, obtain uh, this uh, variation of intensity in the direction of propagation, we can integrate this equation and obtain phase. By obtaining phase, what you can obtain as from this equation is, for example, volumes of cells. And that might be nice because besides having this only visual information, you can have something quantitative from face. 